sales event. You're watching the 2017 NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Our first semifinal about to kick off here from beautiful Orlando in Orlando City Stadium. Our first team to take a look at the South Carolina Gamecocks with Savannah McCaskill up top. Three newcomers on that back line, Julie, coming into this year. And in particular, the key for them has been that SEC Defensive Player of the Year, Grace Fist. She has been leading that back line, and really, largely, that back line has led their season. And Shelly Smith, back-to-back -back SEC Coach of the Year after her team went undefeated in conference play for the second straight year. Her team in its first ever College Cup. And for Paul Ratcliffe, here is how the Cardinal will line up. They're in the 4-3-3, which they've been playing all season, but paid particular attention to Tierna Davidson and Andy Sullivan, two players who I think you're going to see a lot in a USA jersey going forward. Andy Sullivan finally healthy after tearing her ACL in last year's NCAA tournament, so they're thrilled to have her back 100%. Paul Ratcliffe's team telling us they were hungry and motivated. Number one overall seed for the second consecutive year. That early exit in the second round a year ago had this team practicing angry, they told us, since the off season. Stanford in white as the home team. That touch will take an early shot and Michaela Krasowski will get her hands on the ball. Stanford wasting no time getting into their attack. Number one scoring team in the country will certainly challenge the South Carolina defense that has been so good all season long. Stanford really using some wit here. Tegan McGrady will make her way to the attack to start things off. That shot is high. Let's take a look at how South Carolina plans for success, Julie, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, the one thing they're going to be looking at, first offset pieces, because they know as stingy as Stanford defense is, only giving up seven goals this year, four of them have come offset pieces. So they're going to be looking for fouls around the box, trying to get some free kicks, corner kicks. And also they need to have patience, because they know Stanford's going to have a lot of the ball Know when to go, when to press, be organized collectively on defense and not get frustrated by all the chasing. And that's exactly what Shelly Smith told us yesterday. She said, we know Stanford is going to have a lot of the possession and we cannot let that get to us. And Julie, your keys for Stanford success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Number one, that player right there, number 20, Katarina Macario, the freshman, 17 goals and 13 assists. I mean, not just scoring goals, but also a provider as well. And she has just been so good all over the field. So she's going to have to see a lot of the ball today. Stanford wants her to be very involved. What an incredible year. Macario has had a Herman Trophy semifinalist, only freshman on that list of semifinalists. Freshman has never won the award for college soccer's best player. And a lot of people, I think, would put their hand up to vote for number 20. She is the individual leading scorer in the country, and the Stanford offense leads in just about every category. Eighty-six goals, a program record for this Cardinal team as Jay Boissier sends it in. McCaskill way back to pick it up for South Carolina. So many players who play collegiately talk about the need to settle in as a freshman or a sophomore. It takes you a year or two before you can get your feet underneath you. <laughs> not, not with or Katarina not. Macario. <laughs> no, I said to Paul, are you surprised? He's like, I knew she was going to be good, but geez, to do the numbers she's putting up in her freshman year. And look at all the talent that has come through Stanford. Uh, Lindsey Taylor, Kristen Press, Kelly O'Hara. I mean, those were forwards. Kelly played forward at Stanford, and they were tearing up record books, and, and she has surpassed all of them in her freshman year. She has set the bar for herself quite high in her first year on the farm. Peaky Pickett at right back, number 23 there for Stanford. No 
Another freshman along with Macario. Been an important part of this team this season. Alana Cook wearing the captain's armband. The junior center back gives it over to Davidson, Pac-12 Defender of the Year. Madison Haley making her third start. All of those starts coming in the NCAA tournament. There's Sullivan, member of the full U.S. Women's National Team, Andy Sullivan. This ball sent toward the middle of that South Carolina defense. McCaskill trying to force the issue again for South Carolina. In South Carolina, you can already see that tactic in the first five minutes. They're going to stay organized, they're going to stay compact in their defense. They're not going to get stretched and pulled. And then when they have their moments, McCaskill almost leads that line with her defense. When she goes, everyone else follows. It's impressive, though, for South Carolina to see all lines of defense chipping in. They always talk about how important it is from the forward line back. That's where the defense starts. Now you're going to have McCaskill, your leading scorer, waste a lot of energy if she's up there on an island by herself applying the pressure. Macario in some space. Cuts it back to her left. Shot is deflected a little bit. Not the young Brazilian. Got a pretty decent look at things. And this is why they have Madison Haley in there. Oh, we just missed it before uh, Macario got the ball. But she's the one holding the ball, keeping the ball. And we were talking to Paul Radcliffe, what's the difference between her and Savannah Coleman, who's gotten most of the starts, the other freshman forward. And she said, they're similar, but Madison Haley is just so strong on the ball. She keeps the ball so well for us, and then she can turn and lay it off. And that's exactly what she just did to get Macario in. Here is Haley. Good collective defending there from South Carolina, but now can they keep it for a few minutes? It's been a struggle so far. Alexa Barr wanting to advance it. Macario was looking to pass and go, but it was intercepted that time by the senior for South Carolina, Dominique Babbitt, number 12. Tata Malazzo at that right back position, number 23, having to wear that big knee brace. I'm sure that's cumbersome and difficult to get used to. Had to pick that up after an injury late in the season caused her to miss a couple of games. There's McCaskill, two-time SEC Offensive Player of the Year, has done a lot of this, setting up her teammates this season. This is the freshman Ryan Garris. Back in the middle, and the shot is an easy save. For Allison Jahansus, redshirt junior goalkeeper who started every match of this NCAA tournament for Stanford. A good look at the speed of Garris and McCaskill with a lot of space to get in that seam. Turns, finds her well there. And Garris has got some pace. The freshman on the team who's been doing so well. Shelly Smith was effusive about her. And that's South Carolina. They're not going to get a ton of looks, but they've got to be efficient with what they get. And don't give Davidson an opportunity to carry that ball up the field. She'll do it in a heartbeat. This one turned back over to South Carolina. Barr does a nice job of keeping it in bounds. But it is quickly taken away. Jay Boissier doing the job defensively. Stanford, the Lions share of the possession these first nearly 10 minutes. Haven't been able to make too much out of it yet. There is Fisk. Had the initial ball headed down, but not cleared for South Carolina.
Davidson wants to get it wide. Kira Carusa back out to that wing position. And now it's centered again. Jordan DiBiase, her shot stays in the area for just a moment as it was knocked down. Tough tackle on the far side. This is going to be a free kick coming for Stanford. And Ryan Garris on the other side of the field, the freshman who was a big part of that attack a few moments ago for South Carolina. She's down. And that is certainly something you don't want to see for South Carolina because she is such a big part of their attack. And this is on the play earlier. Hmm. Uh, you never like to see those when there's no contact and they react like that. Yeah, and she, she was a question mark as to whether she'd be at 100% coming into this game to start with. Shelly Smith telling us yesterday a couple of her freshmen had been hit with the flu bug. But gosh, your heart goes out to Ryan Garris, who's had a great year for this South Carolina team, member of the SEC all-freshman team. Really added a lot of speed into that attack around the centerpiece of McCaskill. Yeah, and you you need that threatening speed, that pace that stretches the defenses a little, and especially when they're they're trying to work off the counter so much. And she just tries to slow it down. No contact whatsoever. So you fear the worst, certainly hope the best as Garris makes her way to the sideline. And it'll prompt an early substitution from Shelly Smith, another freshman, Luciana Zulo, another one who'd been hit by that flu bug, is going to be called into action early. And this is a, another winger type, five goals, three assists as a freshman, another super productive year for her. Meanwhile, Stanford has had plenty of time to size up this free kick opportunity. McGrady will take it, headed toward the goal, and it's in! You talked about set pieces being important for South Carolina, but it is Stanford making the most of it off this free kick. It looks like it's Jordan DiBiase. Just finding a little seam, gets a window of opportunity there, steps in front of her defender. And you can see that defender has her arm wrapped around her, just finds a little gap, and that is so well done because she's going away from goal to get pace on that ball and still keep it on frame. Was a great finish by Jordan DiBiase. And Stanford adding to its nation-leading goal total. 87th goal of the season, it was indeed. Jordan DiBiase, her eighth goal of the season. McGrady off that beautiful delivery, picking up the assist. And McGrady was the one on the other side who started it. That's the left outside back for Stanford, who got forward, beat that player. She fouls her. She beat Tatum. Milazzo on that right side, and that was set up that free kick for him. Now a turnover will give the ball to South Carolina. McCaskill's cross attempt is blocked. Substitution for South Carolina in the 35th minute. Entering the game is going to find Luciana Zulo. The response, a good one so far from South Carolina, not hanging their heads. Haley trying to bring it down. Did well to get it back to Macario. And here's the challenge for South Carolina. You know how good this team is offensively when you're playing the Stanford. So you, you know it's a risk-reward because you've got to also get on that board, but you don't want to leave yourself exposed. Here is Macario. Her ball across. Boissier keeps it in possession for Stanford. McGrady, basically another midfielder at this point for the Cardinal. 
Again, a centering ball, a dangerous one. The South Carolina defense giving up far too many of those already in this first half. Megan Kerrigan touches it down. The senior transfer from Richmond who started every match for the Gamecocks this season. Back to Fisk. Another transfer, but absolutely pivotal on that back line. Stanford on the attack again. This is Kira Carusa. Has it taken away? McGrady again into the attack for the Cardinal. Being told, Julie, that that goal being credited now to number 10, Tierna Davidson. Uh, yeah, that has got to yeah. be a mistake. Yeah, that's DiBiase. <laughs> it was definitely we DiBiase. We had it right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not that we're keeping track. Sure that they will get that corrected, and they have just done it officially. Stop so. messing with me. <laughs> DiBiase is indeed credited for that early goal in the 10th minute to put Stanford on top. First goal given up by South Carolina in this NCAA tournament. Krasowski comes out. But you have to figure, Julie, that South Carolina knew what kind of an offense they were facing here today. So this shouldn't necessarily put them down and out. You just have to keep putting your head down. Do what you do. This is a team that's won 19 games this season. Absolutely. And they know they have a great back line. I mean, Grace Fist, the one on the ball right now for them, number 18 for South Carolina, plays for the England Youth National Team. She has been SEC Defensive Player of the Year. She's been leading that back line for them. So they know they have that, but the challenge is in a team that doesn't produce a ton of offense, you've got to take some risks. And you leave yourself exposed when you do that. So you just have to pick your times and moments. Here is Andy Sullivan, lays it off nicely. Biasi, the goal scorer, got it out wide. Macario was lurking in the corner. Looks like Macario has shifted over to that far side, at least for the moment. She wanted to get in on some of that Tegan McGrady action that's been going on on the far side. It's been so active. McCaskill slow to get up. May have gotten hit in the face, actually, in that collision. As a player, South Carolina absolutely cannot afford to lose. But it's going to take a lot to get the senior off the field. Alana Cook out to the freshman picket. Stanford sizing up its options. Cook wanting to get in behind that back line with Carusa. But it was well defended by Anna Conklin. This was that play with McCaskill a few minutes ago. And McCaskill's known on both sides of the ball. Look at how tenacious she is. Gets a knee, though, right into the temple, it looks, into the side of the head. But you love that about a player. She's, she's getting in there. She's, that's their forward, their target forward. The challenge is, as you just said earlier, Jen, is you don't want her then exhausted on offense when she gets the ball. Because she can do this. McCaskill with the quick turn, setting up the freshman Zulo, and it is gonna be a corner kick for South Carolina, perhaps outside of McCaskill's brilliance, their best offensive opportunity. And this is where Stanford has been susceptible. They lost that first game early to Florida, three to two. They've only had seven goals scored on them all season. After that 3-2 to two loss, all four of those goals have come off set pieces, two of them off of corner kicks here. Lindsay Lane will take it. She has two assists 
from the corner spot in this tournament already. It is out of the reach of Jahan Seuss, but everybody else too. Another substitution coming for South Carolina. Lauren Chang, freshman out of Alpharetta, Georgia, will replace Kerrigan. This was a substitution we expected to see at some point. Chang really giving a good lift off the bench for Shelly Smith. And she'll come in right in that number 10 spot, attacking center mid, two goals and assist on the air. And Shelly was telling us yesterday, Coach Smith, that she really just brings this great boost of energy for them. More pace than Kerrigan and a lift off the bench. There's Zulo who earned the corner kick for South Carolina. Turns it back, has it on her right foot. Chang into the action early after coming into the match. South Carolina in this build has been able to bring a lot of numbers forward. Lane was a little maybe ambitious looking for Alexa Barr on the far side. A little bit better sequence though, a little rhythm from South Carolina, knocking it through their midfield. McCaskill getting a look on it as well. Not a great throw in, but Chang still got to it. South Carolina trying to keep the pressure on Stanford. Zulo, nice work to break up any potential counterattack that could have happened there with DiBiase and Stanford. And for a few moments, at least, the Cardinal had their rhythm disrupted in this match. Here's DiBiase. Her goal in the 10th minute has Stanford out in front. She's going to lay it off this time. Macario finding a ton of space in the area. Haley plays it back to Boissier. Well, surprise. We didn't see Macario pull, pull, pull the, the trigger, trigger yeah. on that one. I know, you were thinking she was gonna. Jordan DiBiase though, look how she she dribbles through that whole midfield. You love to see players do that because then they pull in. It's like someone driving the lane in basketball, right? They pull in two, three defenders. Then as they step, she dishes to Macario. I think Macario had a window there when she cut it back to crank it myself. Agreed. We're now pleased to be joined by UCLA head coach Amanda Cromwell, whose team will be playing the Duke Blue Devils next. First of all, congratulations. How's your team feeling getting ready for the semifinal? They're really excited. We're uh, raring to go. I'm sure they're back at the hotel watching. Uh, coach, what, what's the biggest key you think against a very good Duke team and a very experienced Duke team? We have to do what we've done all year and, and keep possession. And I think we have a lot of the ball. We, we're very creative and uh, exciting in the attack, and um, we can defend really well. And, and getting that shutout is super important, and defending on set plays, as you saw on the first goal here. Uh, we've got to do a good job on corners and free kicks and, and be really aware about not giving up those fouls. Well, we're sure looking forward to it. Thanks for coming on for a few moments. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. The UCLA Duke matchup features two high-scoring teams. We've got Stanford number one in the country in terms of goals scored. Duke is number three. UCLA is number four. And I just love that contrast because you have a Duke team with so much experience and a UCLA team with eight underclassmen starting. Four freshmen, four sophomores, but they're just full of un youth, U.S. youth national team players. Jesse Fleming is a Canadian national teamer. So, so much talent between those two teams. Meanwhile, Stanford has found themselves with some good space there in front of that South Carolina back line a couple of times now. Boissier has been busy. They're stopping because Andy Sullivan is down. Took one, it looks like it just knocked the wind out of her. on that goal kick beforehand. 
Sullivan, such a true leader for this team. Well, it is a busy time of year, so a lot going on, a lot of sports for you to keep an eye on Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. It's the 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic Women's Basketball. You get to see number one UConn taking on number three Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. That, of course, will also be streaming live on the ESPN app. Huskies have played in and won the Jimmy V Women's Classic the last six years, but what a matchup. Balls in, balls Should be a great one. Sullivan back to her feet, so that's certainly a good sign for Stanford. The challenge for Stanford in this, is, as you'll see, is, is South Carolina stays compact and wants to drop into that bunker is you have to change the pace of the game. You don't want to panic, of course, in terms of speed, and, but you also have to bring some urgency. So we have that patience combined with urgency to get in. South Carolina defense has been so stingy all season long. 16 shutouts, including their first four in the NCAA tournament. That's why they're not this high-scoring juggernaut that the other three teams we have at the College Cup are, but they have always found a way to get through, almost always, I should say, just a couple of losses on the year. Dangerous spot where Conklin put that ball, but Lindsey Lane, one of those seniors holding midfielders for South Carolina there to clean it up. 27 NCAA tournament appearances for Stanford. They are here in their eighth college cup, have that one national championship in 2011. Surprising only one national championship, but then again, North Carolina <laughs> won 21, so. <laughs> Yeah, they've hogged up a lot of them <laughs> over the years. <laughs> 21. That's amazing. It really and is. All, all with Anson Dorrance. So it's, I, I bow to him. <laughs> yeah, as you see, North Carolina out in front by just a wee margin over everybody else in terms of NCAA women's soccer titles. Notre Dame with three. Portland, USC each have a couple. Uh, USC win it out in San Jose last year. Kidani McAlpin's team defeating West Virginia for the 2016 National Championship. Dangerous ball. Haley nearly got to it. Pick it. Lost her footing for a minute, didn't matter. You can see Alana Cook trying to, 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 to decide, can I get that ball all the way across to Macario? Because that back line for South Carolina is shifting all the way across. Well, they've put Macario, Stanford has, on that far side where I said Tatum Malazzo, the right back, is playing with that knee brace. Something she has not been used to very long. Got Conklin, the senior number two here on this near side. Much more experienced defender. Jay Boissier, such a great story to see her healthy out on the field. Boy, she had to be patient, wait her turn. Injured in her first collegiate appearance back in 2014 and had a ton of other injury issues. Didn't play again until last year. Played in nine matches and now finally fully healthy, really having a breakout season. McGrady will get it to Macario. Quick touch centering ball. DiBiase has another one! Goal on 
the season for Jordan DiBiase and a great ball in to Katarina Macario who just finds that seam and DiBiase making a nice run right at the penalty spot gets in on that seam a little deflection to help her out there but a nice finish by Jordan DiBiase and it's not surprising Jordan DiBiase she scored now 21 goals let's see in her career 12 of them have been game winners is that correct Jen Hilder well Julie <laughs> it's tough to add in we can't we don't know should it stand as it is now then I'm yes sorry, she has 11 that. of 19 coming into <laughs> this match and her career that were game winners I, I knew you were doing the math I was I was right. here to help thank you you're welcome yeah but uh, I mean she is synonymous with scoring big <laughs> goals Jordan DiBiase and that is one that Stanford is going to be thrilled about puts a little cushion and it's going to open this game up a little bit Ball did take a deflection going in, made it even harder for Krasowski to try to get behind it, but the setup was really too good. Here's DiBiase again. Haley is down the shot right at Krasowski. Yeah, she's like, why not? If I'm on with two, let's get another. <laughs> That's the intent was good too. She's just trying to bend that one in there. Macario. Still with the ball at her feet. It is cleared out of the area by a South Carolina defender. Krasowski just unable to clear it. That is just one that it, they'll punish you for. And DiBiase almost does just that. Sloppy by Krasowski there. Stanford prepares for its first quarter kick of the match. A couple of substitutions. Savannah Coleman has come in for Madison Haley. Carly Malatsky in as well for Stanford number six. Bianca Galassini has come in for Alexa Barr. For South Carolina, Krasowski punched that one away. Chance for the counterattack here if South Carolina can get some help. Zulo knocked down. That's Macario coming all the way back. Perhaps a smart foul by Macario. Some pace for Zulo. There it is. But Macario just fighting. There's a forward again. Seeing a lot of good defense by the forwards on both sides of the ball. Coming all the way back and gets her. Savannah McCaskill will take it for South Carolina. Flick toward the end line and out. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup Final at Sunday, December 3rd at noon Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA Championships. Here's Malazzo. You were mentioning Jay Brassier's injuries earlier, and, and we didn't get to finish that thought, Jen. The interesting thing with that is that she didn't realize it was a small intestinal bacterial issue that was causing all the injuries because of nutritional issues. And when she finally figured that out after two years, she was able to stay healthy. I mean, imagine the excitement. She's only listed as a redshirt sophomore, but she's actually graduating this year but to be finally healthy in your senior year and to be playing as good as she's playing eight goals and ten assists this year and what a relief that had uh, to be to have a reason finally as right. to why things kept happening to you injuries can be so frustrating Conklin will let Fisk play make. Good touch. McCaskill has it. She'll lay it off to Lane, who's made her way into the attack. Conklin with the overlapping run, but Zulo's going to take the shot. It's deflected by Cook.
Here is Boissier, we were just talking about, wants to try to send Carusa off to the races. Carusa, concerned, was not on side, didn't make a run for it. Malazzo has McCaskill crisscrossing in front of her. Chang trying to turn and is fouled by Cook. Another free kick coming for the Gamecocks. Really unnecessarily so because she's not doing much. And Cook gives her a little tug on that jersey and I think if anything, you don't want to be giving up. If you're Stanford, you don't want to be giving up set piece opportunities around your goal mouth. Chang was back to goal and she gives her that tug, which the referee is standing right there to see. And we go back to one of your keys for South Carolina. Take advantage of these type of set piece opportunities. McCaskill's ball misses everybody. She throws her hands up in frustration. It is the V Week call to action. Let me remind you to join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Such a great organization, great opportunity for you to help this week. Katerina Macario will get a little bit of a break. And Sam Tran, sophomore of Tracy, California, number 18, has replaced her for Stanford. And that's the nice thing about Stanford. I mean, look at their bench. You go to Savannah Coleman, who came in, another freshman. A freshman with so nine goals and four assists <laughs> coming off your bench. I mean, that, that's not bad. Remember Sam Tran, three goals, two assists. There's heaps of depth, which you don't see with a lot of collegiate teams. We showed you all of the awards for Stanford in terms of year-end Pac-12 awards, which they dominated. Defender of the Year, Ford of the Year, Freshman of the Year. Let me not forget Andy Sullivan, the Midfielder of the Year. You look at that and you can say, well, there's a lot of balance. I mean, there's strength at every line, and you're right, it's balance mm -hmm. and it's depth because they can keep the bar raised pretty high even when they bring some substitutions in. And then to have a freshman in Katarina Macarios, you know, putting up the number she is, 17 goals, 14 assists now with her assist today to add to that. And that story is just amazing to me because here's a kid who grew up in Brazil. This is Katarina. Grew up in Brazil, and when she got to about 12 years old, realized where she lived in Brasilia, there wasn't a lot of opportunities to actually keep playing as a young girl there and as a young woman. And so they as a family made the decision. The mom would stay because she was a surgeon in Brasilia and the family, the dad and the brother and Katarina would move to San Diego. So she had an opportunity to continue to pursue her dream. How, and, and here she is at Stanford lighting it up. I mean, it's just such a cool story. Sadly, Brazil now has lost someone who's incredibly talented she has said I, you know this is my country now I've lived here since I'm 12 but she couldn't if the USA wanted her in a US jersey she couldn't play until she's 23 years old because of that FIFA rule five years after she turns 18 yeah so she's gonna have to be patient but she told us in no uncertain terms she absolutely wants to wear the red white and blue she said that's been her dream and not that I've done the math, Jen, but that's October 22nd, 2022. <laughs> <laughs> I even I even uh, was texting with Neil Beathy at U.S. Soccer today saying, hey, is there any way to put a waiver on that five years? And he said, well, we have to prove that they came for work. And some of the articles aren't saying that. She came for soccer, which is amazing. Her mom is still in Brasilia and only gets out here about every four to six months. She hasn't, Katerina hasn't been back since. She says, I miss it. All my family's back there, but, you know, I, I'm loving it here. And I'm loving that I have an opportunity to be celebrated and live out my dream here in America. 
If you don't know the story, Graham Hayes wrote about yes. it beautifully on ESPNW's uh, website, so check that out. And while you're there, plenty of other things to check out on ESPNW.com. On the Rim podcast, the China Robinson women's basketball. That is a great one to keep up with. A lot of good storylines can follow across all sports at ESPNW.com. Under 10 minutes to play in our first half here, Julie. A couple of goals from Jordan DiBiase has Stanford feeling pretty comfortable, although South Carolina has had some moments. They've had some set-piece opportunities that they just haven't been able to be very dangerous with yet. And I think if you're Shelly Smith and Jamie Smith at halftime, especially Jamie, her husband, who's a co-coach with her, they're going to talk about staying organized keeping it at two so they're within striking distance but also being more efficient and effective on those set pieces because that is really their chance can they get some fouls around the box get some corner kicks create a little offensive momentum here and continue to trust in themselves and have confidence those were two words that kept coming up that this team really believed in one another they believed that they could do everything it took to get to that next step and and they certainly aren't a team that you know hasn't faced adversity this is a team that lost nine seniors six of them key starters and you know all sec players and so everyone thought ah there's no chance this team which has been on the cusp of getting to this college cup so many years would have a chance to get there this season and here they are so don't do not count them out absolutely not it's turnover dangerous space Abbott is able to keep possession, keep things calm at the moment, but then just launches it forward. Nobody home. McCaskill had come further up the field. And if you'd asked anybody, if, including South Carolina players and fans, if they thought that this team could run through the Southeastern Conference unbeaten for a second straight year, I don't think any of them would have even said that was the case, but that is exactly what they did. And remember, the SEC led all conferences with a record nine teams making yeah. it to the field of 64. Great point. Yeah, great point. Including the Florida Gators, who South Carolina had to beat twice this season, including the quarterfinals, to make it here. Yeah, 16 shutouts, and, and three of that four on the back line graduated. Yeah. So you have a freshman in Jackie Schaefer who's been doing tremendous alongside the gift they got with Grace Fisk coming from Penn State this year. A transfer over from Penn State, and, and those two as center backs, and then they filled in around them, of course. They already had Anna Conklin on left back, Tatum Milazzo at right back, and that's been a tremendous four back for them this, this year. Yeah, and Milazzo was a player who didn't start a single match a year ago, but slid right into that starting spot this season. Another substitution is BD Goad, the Australian out of Melbourne. Sophomore will come on for Carusa. I mentioned the Florida Gators, a team that South Carolina beat twice this season. Also keep in mind, one team beat Stanford this year, and it was Florida. Mm -hmm. Way early in the season. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by the NCAA Women's Volleyball... <laughs> No, let's stick with soccer. <laughs> and Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. And in part by Dr. Scholl. And Courtyard, Fairfield, Four Points, and Spring Hill Suite. We live by the golden rule. Appreciate all of these sponsors of the NCAA championships. There 
there's Grace Fisk, one of those key cogs who Shelly Smith told us her team absolutely would not be here. Been their defensive MVP all season long without the play of Fisk. And they have the work cut out for them right now. South Carolina hasn't conceded two goals very often this season. The Stanford offense, the best in the nation, continuing to pose a challenge. McCaskill's had enough of that. She wants it back, she'll get it. Savannah McCaskill, full head of steam, has a little bit of help out to her right. Gallicini wanted to go left, but right into the feet of a retreating Alana Cook. And that's another challenge for South Carolina is keeping up with McCaskill. When she busts free like that, you've got to get numbers around her. She's looking for an outlet there. And that's where that frustration comes in. It's one of the things that, you know, Shelly Smith, she's had to, to really coach McCaskill through is, is she had 17 goals last year. And so she, of course, was very targeted this year. And that gets frustrating for forwards. And she gets knocked around quite a bit because they know she's the key to their offense. And so she has to stay positive for this group to continue to plug away and try and knock one back. Well, because con consider also, I mean, she's got Galassini to her right right now, a freshman. Here's Malazzo making a run. Zulo on the other side, also a freshman. Malazzo wanting to get it to McCaskill, trying desperately to get around Sullivan to get to it. Rather quiet first half for Andy Sullivan, but turning up in an important part of the field to snuff out that South Carolina attack. Coming up at halftime, we will preview our second NCAA semifinal between UCLA and Duke. Give you more information about the V-Week call to action. And we'll take a look back at our first half. Jordan DiBiase, the story for Stanford so far with her two goals. Potential looming of an all Pac-12 championship with UCLA in that second game against Duke. Of course, the Blue Devils will have something to say about that. And still a full half and change here to play for South Carolina. Try to make a push against this top-ranked Stanford team. It's a one-nothing win for Stanford in the regular season over UCLA. Is Andy Sullivan. Even with Macario out, that far side working and still the ball finding its way to DiBiase. Stanford team told us they do not let up with a lead. They're going to keep pressing. That's why they have a nation leading 88 goals on the season. Yeah, they said, in, I thought that was super interesting, yeah. actually, yesterday when we were talking to the players. A little bit of a nervy moment there in the back for South Carolina. They, they talked about, the players talked about in the past they'd have, they called them humble wins. Yeah. <laughs> they said, not anymore. We're not going to win just 1 0, 2 0 anymore. We're, we're going to keep pushing for more. We want a ruthless mentality. And I was like, wow, I love it. Well, that's why you see wins like 4 nothing over the Big Ten champs, Penn State. As they're getting in behind here, Fisk recovers. But it will be a corner kick. First round for Stanford in the NCAA tournament. A 9-1 win over Utah Valley. Coming into this match, they'd outscored their NCAA opponents 16-1. Ball curling just outside the six. Tran sends it back in. It's headed down, saved off the post. Final shot goes out of bounds. South Carolina can take 
a breath. But they just about found themselves trailing by three. And that was Tierra Davidson, who just got a good head on it. Two post players there to save it for South Carolina. Makes it an, an easy save there. But South Carolina head coach Shelly Smith joining us now. Coach, your team down two goals. What do you tell them to keep their heads up and try to get back in this? Well, you know, there's uh, nothing to lose at this point. We are, uh, we need to battle. We uh, came here to play and we didn't play in that first 20 minutes and they hurt us. Uh, obviously, excellent team. They beat us to balls. Um, you can't afford to miss tackles and uh, not keep the ball. Uh, you see what they do if, if that happens. And unfortunately, we lost a player at the same time or goal. They score a goal. So, unfortunate circumstance, but uh, we'll uh, battle back in that second half. Coach, any changes tactically to get some help around McCaskill up front? Yeah, we uh, we moved uh, Chang a little higher so we could get some pressure up top. Um, you know, you just got to figure out where you're going to stop them, and uh, you give something else away. So we right. need to we want to get after them, and we just have to be better once we do turn them over to, to keep it. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Shelly Smith, South Carolina team, trailing the Stanford Cardinal two nothing at the half of our first semifinal coming up at halftime. We'll preview semifinal number two between UCLA and Duke. In the 2017 NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Our score of semifinal number one, Stanford leading South Carolina two to nothing. We're now joined by Stanford head coach Paul Ratcliffe. Coach, I hope you liked what you saw in that first half. We sure did. What was working for you? Yeah, well, Jordan DiBiase was definitely working for <laughs> us. Uh, two fantastic goals like she's been doing all season. But I thought we started strong, we played well, and we dropped off a little bit towards the end of the second half, or the end of the first half. But we need to keep possession of the ball, keep finding the open player, and then continue to attack and try to get a third. Any changes or adjustments for the second half, Coach? Uh, we're gonna start the same way we started. All right, no changes tactically either? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Okay, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, you guys. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, That's right? right. Love to have been in the South Carolina locker room, though, and heard what Shelly and Jamie Smith had to say to their team. See what kind of fight we can see from the Gamecocks here in the second half. Stanford sitting on that two-goal lead as we start the second half. They are on a 20-game winning streak. You see the incredible goal differential over that stretch. And that is the monumental task that sits in front of South Carolina. To dig yourself out of a hole against a team who just doesn't give up much and is so good on the other side as well, offensively. 20 in a row, pretty impressive streak, but I think anybody Stanford uniform is going to be happy until it's 22 in a row holding that national championship trophy. Here is Katarina Macario, Herman Trophy semifinalist, takes the shot and hits the post. It's on the line spinning. And maybe a little prayer from Michaela Krasowski. Kept an extra spin on that ball to keep it from going over the line. Nation's leading scorer just about rung up another one there. And that may be under review, actually, as our referee, Katya Koroleva, will take a look. And remember, what you look for is the entire ball crossing the plane. It's a good glimpse, too, of what Katarina Macario can do. Does it go all the way over? I don't believe it does from that angle. Here's a better one here. No. no. Zaski does a good job of jumping right back on that. Yeah. She knows it's not a goal. But, as you see this review, they are allowed to take a look to determine whether a goal has been scored. It can also be used for identifying a player in disciplinary matters. And it can only be initiated by the referee, not by the coaches. And as we suspected, pretty, but still. Pretty simple. You can see yep. the reasoning to want to go back and look at that. 
think UCLA might have hoped to have that review during the regular season when they played Stanford. Their star, Haley Mace, had one ring off the crossbar. Sure looked like it went in. And just a few moments later on the other <laughs> end of the field, the game's only goal was scored, and Stanford won it. South Carolina already down one player. Ryan Garris, we're being told, the freshman who went out in the opening minutes of this match, part of the attack for South Carolina, will not return. And this is Tatum Malazzo, the right back, who is back on her feet. There you see Garris on the bench. Grace Fisk, beautiful ball sent in. Not enough on it by the target players for South Carolina. It's an interesting goalkeeping situation for Stanford, isn't it? This is AJ, Allison Jehansus, who has started every NCAA tournament match, but during the regular season, she and Lauren Rude really alternated, and Paul Ratcliffe telling us they're both really good, they're really similar. He just kind of went with who had the hot hand, and for a while they both did, so he was letting them both play. And he said Rude had a little injury right before the playoffs NCAA started, and so I was going with AJ, and we're sticking with AJ. Nice to have that embarrassment of riches. Boissier tracks down the second ball from the free kick that Stanford plays short. McGrady up toward Mace, bouncing in the area. Carusa gets to it. I know it was going to go toward number 11, DiBiase. Her runs have been spot on in this match. Two goals to show for it. Mace with the turn and the shot, but a little dribbler toward Krasowski. Madison Haley, excuse me. I was talking about Mace for UCLA. Got her on the brain. We'll see her in the next <laughs> semifinal. That is Haley, number 26, the freshman for Stanford. Took that shot. So can Stanford keep their foot on the pedal, as Paul Ratcliffe said he wanted to see? And can South Carolina pull one back, try to fight their way back into this match? Gamecocks in their first ever NCAA College Cup appearance. And you can see that tactical change that Shelly Smith talked about. Lauren Chang going higher for South Carolina next to McCaskill. Malazzo took it off the foot of Macario. You just worry, as Shelly Smith told us, you're concerned at least about the space you leave behind when you do put another player in Chang, who gets a start in the second half, up in the attack, more space in that midfield for that talented Stanford midfield to work through. Sullivan changing the gear out to Boissier. Her touch far out in front of her, and Fisk will just let it roll out of bounds. We'll have the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game on Saturday between the number one Clemson Tigers and the seventh ranked Miami Hurricanes. A spot in the college football playoff on the line for Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers. That's 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and live on the ESPN app. Miami's been so good this season, too. Got the turnover chain working for the Hurricanes on the football field. And you wonder what kind of chaos could be created should Miami win that game. Would they have a chance to go to the playoffs? Pickett makes an overlapping run, gets the ball back. Here's Carusa. Great year for Kira Carusa, too. Haven't talked about her all that much, but the redshirt junior, all Pac-12. Second team selection for the third straight year. 14 goals on the season. And 
she has increased her production a ton this year. She said, I just, I'm more confident. And she said, and she looked over at Katarina, <laughs> and it helps having Kat. It's like the mouse chasing the cheese. Yes. I'm just trying to keep up with her. <laughs> Dangerous Whoa. set piece here for Stanford. It glances off maybe a couple of ponytails, and that's it. Maybe goal kick for South Carolina. UCLA Bruins making their 10th College Cup appearance and making their way to Orlando City Stadium. They'll take on the Duke Blue Devils in our next semifinal. Haley still got it away from a couple of defenders. Boissier. Her attempt is not on target. You can see Andy Sullivan in the middle of the field, encouraging, it's okay, talking. There's so much respect for that senior captain for Stanford and her demeanor and calmness and confidence. I've heard a lot of people say, gosh, would love to just win one for her. Yeah. You, you could see it when we talked to all the players yesterday, just how much they love and respect their captain and what a calming influence, as you said, she is in the middle of the field, Andy Sullivan. As a college player being called into the full U.S. national team camp. Missed the NCAA first round game for those friendlies against Canada. Came off the bench holding midfield role in both matches. McCaskill will take it over for South Carolina. Tried to lay it off, but Pickett took it right back for Stanford, was looking for DiBiase. It's hard to pick a weakness of the Stanford team, watching them and, and looking at their body of work from the season. Boissier charging toward that back line. She's really pinching in, leaving Macario open in the box. The shot from the nation's leading goal scorer. That's going to leave a mark. And this is exactly where she wants to pick it up because she can isolate, she can take that little cut, fakes the shot, and then Fist just gets a, a foot on it. But she can strike it with that volley. With that instep, sorry. But, and on the volley as well. They've talked about her just being able to just technically so clean in front of goal. Bossiera play it short to Sullivan. Love that Kiki Pickett, oh, five foot nothing of her, was attempting to get up in the air for that. Couldn't quite get there. She has it now at her feet. We'll try to lay it off for Carusa. Back to Pickett. Fisk again. Good defenders find a way to be in the right spaces, don't they? And she springs it up to McCaskill. May not be such a bad thing. It goes out of bounds, allows her to get some help in the attack. Zulo, now over to Chang. Can the freshman pick up the South Carolina team? Lindsay Lane, one of the seniors, takes the shot from distance. Easy save for Jahansus. How about that Fisk release ball? <laughs> 60 yards right at the, you know, in stride to McCaskill there. Credit to Alana Cook for getting back and stopping that counter. Macario with her heels on the sideline. Looking for, yes, the center back, Tierna Davidson, who will now retreat back. Dropped back into that center back spot after being in the midfield early in the season. And that loss to Florida went back there. A ball from Haley, DiBiase. Couldn't quite get her footing right. Hey. 
And, and, and Tierna Davidson's one we haven't talked a lot about, but when games are tight and she's coming forward from that center back position, as she did against Florida State, mm -hmm. to assist on the on the winning goal, I mean, she's so dangerous, and she's so good on the ball. She makes these long 70-yard runs. No one wants to track it, and she just glides through lines. This is a player, I think, who's got a ton of potential and upside, both at center back and at center mid on the, the national team one day as well. Jill Ellis has been bringing her in to take a look at her. Teammates told us yesterday, teams don't know what to think when they see number 10 come flying up the field from, from her center back spot. First team All-American, Herman Trophy semifinalist, Pac-12 Defender of the Year is the sophomore Davidson. And you mentioned that Florida State game. And that was the third round of the NCAA tournament, just a one nothing win for Stanford over the Seminoles in that one. And Davidson set up DiBiase in the 79th minute. Get the win. She, she's... Paul Ratcliffe said it was like she looked around and said, OK, if no one else is going to break down this team, I'm going to do it from that center back position. And she literally made a 70, 80 yard run and brought, I think she beat four or five players and then laid it back to DiBiase to finish it. Some nice combination work here by the Cardinal, moving the ball up the field with numbers, but it's an easy grab for Krasowski. Glance off the head of McCaskill. We'll go toward Alexa Barr. I haven't been able to call her name nearly enough for South Carolina. Number 10, Alexa Barr. Had a great year, eight goals, one assist. Second on the team in game winning goals behind McCaskill. And this is where South Carolina is going to have to decide look, we've got to get Tatum Milazzo in. We've got to get Conklin in. These are the outside backs. Now you're seeing a skew come in for Milazzo. So they're going to have to take those chances, that risk-reward. Brooklyn Woodard also coming in along with Sarah Eskew, freshman defender, who played a big role in the first half, clearing a ball off the post in the waning moments. You see in the NCAA, you are allowed one re-entry in the second half. And at first glance with those substitutions, it looks like they've gone South Carolina on cue to that three back now with his skew on the right, Fisk in the middle. So it could be a 3-5-2 now that South Carolina is moving to, trying to take a more aggressive stance and get some numbers forward. The NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we help you live life differently. And in part by Dr. Scholes and Courtyard, Fairfield, Four Points, and Spring Hill Suites. We live by the golden rule. See if the tactical changes maybe pay off. I was for wrong. South I was for hung. Oh. <laughs> Maybe Schaefer, at the moment. <laughs> Schaefer came back. It's still a 4-4-2. <laughs> Maybe it was wishful thinking. They're going to a three-back. They're pushing numbers. <laughs> and then I looked again. And I was like, nope, they're not. But Askew is at right back. Yep, she came in for Malazzo. You've got Conklin at left back. And then Fisk and Schaefer in the center. Here's SQ, freshman who's come in to play both outside back positions throughout the season for South Carolina. I, I think that's a good move because now you got some fresh legs in that outside back position with SKU and you can get some numbers in with them. They're gonna have to get those outside backs forward as we were just saying. Fisk heads it down, falls right to the feet of Haley, who is looking to go up the middle. But right out of the reach, Carusa. 
bit too much weight on that one. McCaskill doing just enough to keep that ball alive, allowed Zulo to get to it. Look at McCaskill work to try to get it back. It will be South Carolina throw. Duke Blue Devils making their way to Orlando City Stadium. Making their fourth College Cup appearance. They will play in our second semifinal of the evening against the UCLA Bruins. Only team with any real College Cup experience. 16 players. Part of the College Cup team for Duke two years ago. So experienced, six seniors starting, and they, you could tell when you talked to them yesterday, they, when they say, you know, in the past we would have walked into a stadium like this and been like, oh my, eyes wide. <laughs> yeah, eyes wide, and they said, we try and, you know, obviously it's amazing and beautiful and so appreciative, but we're not as overwhelmed as we were two years ago with every little thing, which is a good thing. They said, you know, you, you want to keep those emotions in check. Stanford Carusa trying to catch up again. Quick turn from Zulo. Defended and then fouled by Cook. McCaskill making that move. When she passes it off, she will make a run to get it back. She does here. Looking to lay it off, Galassini. A little behind the play. Ball stepped in and won momentarily by McGrady, right back to South Carolina. Ball has a chance on the far side. That's Brooklyn Woodard, her first touch. Going to let her down. Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 Pacific on ESPN. We've got some women's basketball. The 16th annual Jimmy V Women's Classic presented by Corona. Number one, UConn. Number three, Notre Dame at the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut. That game will also be streaming live on the ESPN app. Huskies have played in and won the Jimmy V Women's Classic the last six years. What a terrific early season women's basketball matchup. You don't see Stanford do this all that often, but Sullivan lifted her head, thought perhaps she saw an opportunity to get in behind that back line of South Carolina. Duke head coach Robbie Church joining us now on the headset. Coach, congratulations on making it here. Your team seemed pretty confident when we talked to them yesterday. What makes you confident with this group? <laughs> because of them, they are, uh, they're prepared. They're ready to go. They're excited to be here. It's an unbelievable um, venue, and it's just a great honor to be playing in this game. What's the biggest key for you guys tonight, Coach? Uh, it's for us to keep the ball. We got to possess it. We got to we got to keep it. We got to be very very aggressive in the final in the final third with it, and we got to defend with the vengeance. <laughs> we look forward to it, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Duke Blue Devils have outscored their NCAA opponents 15 to nothing in their first four games of this tournament. Came out the beginning of the season stated their goals that they want to be here and they want to win it <laughs> i haven't shied away from that you gotta love it too it's like they they said hey in the past we've always been so humble about oh we're gonna try our best and, and you know and, and we'll see where that takes us and they said no we gotta say it out loud you gotta sing your dreams out loud love that mentality Chain coming back onto the field for South Carolina, replacing Zulo. Shelly Smith doing all she can with her bench to try to make up for that loss of Ryan Garris. Went out with injury in the opening minutes of this match.
foul against South Carolina. You can see Tierna Davidson again creeping into that midfield, making those little runs. You love a center back with that ability and that confidence and calmness on the ball. Galassini whistled for the foul. Carusa will try to collect it, does well. Ball right outside the area. Sullivan gathers over to pick it. On the back heel from Macario. Woodard pressured. Bell Breedy, number four for Stanford, headed down to Carusa. Corner kick coming for the Cardinal. Fourth of the match, just one for South Carolina. And let's see. What kind of magic the freshman can produce from the corner spot. Headed down. Breedy. A touch out. SQ heads it out of bounds. turned into a beautiful evening here in Orlando. Field is pristine condition. Oh, it's so nice, isn't it? Home of the Orlando City men's team in MLS, the Orlando Pride in NWSL. A couple more substitutions. It's Malazzo coming back in for SQ. And Alexa Barr, who got a little bit of a rest, will replace Galassini. South Carolina defensively has done the job here in the second half. Stanford getting both of its goals in the first 45 minutes. No score since halftime. But can South Carolina find a way to produce anything on the offensive end? The question. They have Savannah McCaskill, number seven. Two-time SEC Offensive Player of the Year. One of the greatest ever offensively at South Carolina. And this Always is, a weapon. And this is where you look at, okay, 20 minutes in. Again, haven't taken many risks. They've, and they've kept it. So they've kept the game in hand. They've kept it attainable and reachable, which is still a large task at Stanford. But now as you've got it, you've got to start sending some numbers. You've got to get McCaskill some help up front besides just Chang. wonder if you might see a number 10, Alexa Barr, start creeping higher a little bit more. She's a player that can get into the attack for South Carolina. Just came back into the match. Fresh legs, a little rested. Carissa, back out wide. Tran. The ball over the crossbar. Mentioned both those goals coming in the first half. Both of them coming from Jordan DiBiase. Tegan McGrady with a nice ball in. Jordan DiBiase, a, a player hanging on her, going away from the goal. And she still is able to get that one on frame. And then Katarina Macario with a nice ball across. DiBiase finding that seam, getting a little help from Lindsay Lane on that deflection. But she's been the difference in this game. Two goals for a player that is accustomed to scoring big goals in big games, that's for sure. Had that big goal that you mentioned earlier that Tierra Davidson set up with her run from the back against Florida State in the third round of this NCAA tournament. And now those two important goals in this College Cup semifinal. 
Replacing number 16, Booker of the Water. And also for South Carolina, entering the game, number 23, Tatum Palazzo. Replacing number 49, Sarah Escu. Escu. Free kicks in into the area by South Carolina over the head of McCaskill. This is Belle Breedy, freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, went to Milton High School, had her first career goal in the NCAA tournament in that 9-1 route of Utah Valley for Stanford. Ladies and gentlemen, substitution for Stanford, also with the Soviet Union, entering the game number seven, Jane Bustier, replacing number 11, Jordan Liviasi. Dominique Babbitt, one of those seniors, doesn't want to see her career come to an end. Not yet. One more game to play. But South Carolina, I think you're right, Julie. This is a team that all season long has really built themselves on being disciplined. They've had a lot of close games, and they've just right. found a way. But do they have it in their DNA to take risks and push some numbers forward? Yeah, well, when, when you're looking at the last... 17 minutes of your season, right? There's not much to lose. You got to give it a go. DiBiase didn't stay on the bench for long. She's coming back. So, coach, I got two goals. Let's see if I can tack on one more. How about a hat trick? Help the team and keep pressing forward. Talking about those seniors from, from South Carolina, two Elite Eights, and now the first College Cup in program history and their resume for those seniors is an impressive run. Bar, not a great touch, but it wound up in a pretty Ladies good spot going to McCaskill. It has been quite a run for this South Carolina team the last couple of years. They went undefeated in the entire regular season a year ago coming into the NCAA tournament, wound up losing to North Carolina in the quarterfinal round. A win away from the College Cup last year. And now this year making it, as you said, to their first College Cup, but clearly wanting more. That's a great ball from McCaskill, a little too far out in front. Lauren Jankowski, the senior, nearly had a golden opportunity. Tonight we'll have the Pac-12 championship game between number 12 Stanford and number 10 USC at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Little football championship action for you. Then Saturday at noon Eastern on ABC, we'll have the American championship game between number 20 Memphis and number 14 undefeated at 11-0 UCF. Both games also available on the ESPN app. And this is where Stanford, when you're just closing out the game, last 15 minutes, they just need to, to hold it, knock it. You have so many good players on the ball in midfield that just dictate and pull the strings. Just keep it. Make them chase. Stanford, the number one overall seed, number one ranked team in the country coming into this College Cup. Pretty heavy favorite. Despite the bevy of talent amongst our other College Cup participants. And they've looked comfortable from the get-go. Not overly dominant, but have seemed to be able to play their game for the most part, Julie, and gotten a couple of goals from DiBiase. And really haven't had to deal with much in terms of offensive threats from South Carolina. I mean, it's been pretty steady. One of your keys to the game was to silence McCaskill, and they've done a pretty good job of that. Some of your best defense is just keeping the ball away from the other team. And Stanford's done a nice job of that in this match as well. 
And that clearly is going to be the challenge for South Carolina going forward is, is how do you fill the shoes of someone as good as McCaskill? Because you can see she's tactically so aware as well, good at playmaking. And when she drops into that seam, she's constantly getting players in. Has been such a force for them over these four years. And she's another one of those players you may see coming up in the youth national teams for the U.S. There's a U23 camp going on here in Orlando right now for the U.S. McCaskill most certainly would have been called into that, but it's busy. <laughs> <laughs> a little preoccupied right now. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been a captain of some of those youth teams. Jordan DiBiase, what a College Cup semifinal for her. Goal in the 10th and the 26th minute of this match. Just about 12 and a half minutes to play of our first semifinal. It's the third time all season this stingy South Carolina team has given up more than one goal. It took the nation's number one offense to do it. But the Cardinal been shut out in the second half. Pickett stepping into the attack from a right back spot, sends it in and over the goal. Gianna Zulo, future bright for her in Columbia, South Carolina. Zulo, Chang, Galassini, refreshman coming off the bench, really playing important roles with another freshman, Ryan Garris, sidelined with injury in this match. But you talk about the potential possibly to fill the shoes of the likes of Savannah McCaskill. It is a strong freshman class that Shelly Smith has in this group. And, and what a disappointment for Ryan Garris to and for the team to lose her that early in the game. Because right before she goes down, you see her make that wonderful run up the left flank, beat a defender, get in line. I mean, that was probably one of their better looks. And then you lose one of your speedier, pacier attacking players. And that really has been the key this year with McCaskill is having some pace around her to get in behind. There is Ryan Garris. Freshman who started 22 matches, all but one this season for South Carolina. Reminder, we have UCLA and Duke coming up in our second semifinal of the evening. They await to see the winner of this one at the moment. Stanford hanging on to its two-goal lead. Think about that for UCLA. Eight underclassmen starting in that 11. Yeah. Four freshmen, four so sophomores. We'll see if, if they're a bit wide-eyed or not when they I, get onto the I field. I don't think so because so many of those players have played in youth World Cups yeah. and have you know, had national team careers already, especially with the youth national team. Jesse Fleming with the Canadian national team. So I don't expect that, but it's a young, talented team right there. And I love what Duke told us, too. They said they understand that it certainly is an advantage. It should be an advantage that they have experience. But they said, look, we also know yeah. what it's like to be a young team. When they were here two years ago, they were all underclassmen and they beat the defending national champs Florida State in the semifinal right. to make it to the championship. So they understand right. they that said a young team could do it too. Of it. it actually could be a benefit as well, right? And Stanford just trying to see this one out. Pretty outside of the foot touch pass from Boissier. DiBiase for the hat trick! Just missed it! We're trying to waste time in the corner, and she said, well, you give it to me this wide open. <laughs> Why not? I would if I'm sitting on two. And you can see exactly what she's trying to do, just trying to bend it. She doesn't hit it with everything, just trying to bend it into that top corner. 
It's a good look. Great idea. 15th shot of the match for Stanford. This is a team accustomed to outscoring, out shooting, out corner kicking, <laughs> if I can make that a verb, <laughs> most of their opponents this season. Boissier is looking to go right back toward that corner. Carusa will put it at the feet of the captain, Sullivan. Tran couldn't hang on to it, so Conklin, one of those seniors for South Carolina, will make the throw. Coverage of the NCAA Championships continues with the Women's College Cup Final Sunday, December 3rd at noon Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. We'll have the winner of this one taking on the winner of our next semifinal between UCLA and Duke in that championship match on Sunday. Stanford hoping to make its fourth trip to the championship game. Last time they were there was 2011. That's when they won program's only national championship. Ladies and gentlemen, substitution for South Carolina in the 83rd minute. Macario lays it off. Entering the game is number nine. Tran back toward Macario, bouncing around in the area. South Carolina can't really get a good clearance. Also McGrady. Let's not forget what a great first half Tegan McGrady had, too, for Stanford, credited with a couple of assists as she and McCaskill do battle. And now McCaskill will give up the free kick to Stanford. Tegan McGrady, a junior out of San Jose. All Pac-12 second team selection this year. Missed a handful of games this season with injury, but came back in the quarterfinal match and has been huge here tonight. She'll take it. Bent in with the left foot. Sullivan to the goal scorer, DiBiase. I never like when they go into the corner and turn their back. It's just asking to get whacked and injured. But no one gave her an outlet for Stanford. Keep that ball swinging around. You can take it into the corner, but then swing it back. Someone give her another outlet. If you were South Carolina, anything that that you'd like to have seen done differently or yeah. that the game could have tried. more players forward. Yeah. <laughs> take the risks, you right? You've got to take the risks. You know, and, and, you know, it's hard and easy to say from where Ladies we're sitting in our perch here, here, but when you're playing against a team that is as good offensively with so many threats as Stanford, but we're looking at the last, you know, in these last 15 minutes, we haven't seen anything in terms of a switch in tactics or formation, and that's to me, it's like, you just got to take those chances. You get one, then who knows? The game suddenly changes. You're still in this. And I just haven't seen that urgency. It's almost as if they know they're being outclassed a little bit by Stanford, and we're just going to keep it, you know, keep it simple. But nothing to lose in these last five minutes of your season. You might as well start throwing numbers, sending the ball, trying to get something going, because you never know. You're still in this at two. Yeah, you know, sometimes, even though South Carolina told us yesterday and Shelly Smith reiterated that, you know, they just have to continue to believe in themselves. How often have you seen, in, in really any sports at any level, that sometimes after the fact, teams will admit, you know what? We gave them a little too much respect, the opponent. Right, right. Yeah, that's a great point. Ladies and gentlemen, substitutions for South Carolina. 
Under four minutes to play of our first NCAA Women's College Cup semifinal here from Orlando City Stadium. Jen Hildreth, Julie Foudy on hand. I mean, the challenge, too, with Stanford on the other side of that is it's hard to get the ball, right? And you can't get numbers forward when you don't have possession. So give credit to Stanford for keeping it well, and they have the players to do so. But yeah, I'd love to see South Carolina step and press here. Again, you've got a, a few minutes. Got Megan Kerrigan, the senior who checked back in, number six. Try to see this one out. McCaskill, two defenders around her, still gets the ball away, far post. It'll fall down into the hands of Jahansus. That was a little glimpse, though, of how quickly Savannah McCaskill could change a game. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and that, she's able to get her hips around that and bring that around and get in positions where she can just create something. I mean, For me, covering the SEC during the regular season the last few years, it has been an absolute pleasure to watch Savannah McCaskill play. That touch, thankfully, for Krasowski goes out of bounds. Yeah, I think Krasowski knows she has a little more time than that, right? She probably could bring that down. That was a tough ball coming back to her some pace. Well, and you could see on her face, and she's fighting some emotions right now. She told us yesterday, She's an emotional player. She's tried to work on that, but this has been tough. It's never easy to see your season come to an end. Macario and Boissier conferring about the corner. McGrady will take the shot. That's a better way to finish things off if you're Krasowski. The ball in the hands. One minute remaining. Stanford eyeing a return trip to the College Cup Championship match on Sunday. Macario One minute. One weaving minute. her way through the defense. Another save late in the match for Krasowski. Right at her. Had to get down, though. <laughs> South Carolina, fifth ranked team in the country, just two losses all season long, and one of their best seasons, making it farther than any other team in school history. First ever College Cup. But their journey will end here in the semifinals. The Stanford Cardinal, the number one ranked team, number one overall seed. Just too strong in this matchup. Lots to be proud of, as we just said, for South Carolina as well. Given the nine seniors they lost, six that were key players, and the rebuilding they did this year. But Stanford one step closer to that national championship. They'll get a chance to play for it. They await the winner of our next semifinal between UCLA and Duke. And Stanford has to be pleased. They didn't have to expend too much energy. It didn't go into overtime. They got to play a lot of players. Not probably the best game they've ever had. A quiet game for Katarina Macario, even though she does get the assist. But those are the expectations you have on a player like that. But they go into this final now saying, okay, we've got through that. We focus on this last game. Lots to be positive about for the Cardinal. So Stanford awaiting the winner of UCLA and Duke could see an All-Pac-12 final. We'll see what happens. Our final score, 2-0 Stanford, the winners. Coming up next, E60 Pictures catching Kayla, followed by UCLA and Duke. <laughs>